Time for some political nuts. Would you like to see politicians lying? Would you? Would you? Alrighty then, let's watch it. I would like to go back to the tweets of the racist person that works for you. What does caudacity mean? I have no idea, Congressman. You took six months to investigate one tweet? You didn't even figure out what the words meant? I didn't investigate the thing. She's a DOD. Well, uh, you she's said a, in the Fox News a... article that you were going to take 30 days and investigate, and it took you six months. In, in a six-month investigation, you guys didn't learn what caudacity meant? I think you know. I think every person that's going to watch this exchange knows you know. It's, it's, she's trying to lash audaciousness with someone being Caucasian, isn't she? I have no idea, Congressman. Wow, what an investigation. When she well, does PD I did sessions, not, I will says, say I did not do the investigation. She is a, a GS employee that's employed by Dodia. Well, Dodia conducted the investigation. Gosh, uh, the Pentagon told Fox News Digital that Gil Cisneros would provide a final decision in 30 days. So they gave, so someone at the Pentagon is throwing your name out there as being responsible for this, and now it looks foolish that you're suggesting you don't know what that means. PD, well, I would say PD, that, hold on, that PD quote sessions. did not come from let's me. Go to, let's go to this, Mr. Cisneros. From. What's a PD session? Um, my guess would be personal development. Personal development. You don't think it's professional development? Another open too. matter for the investigation that it didn't resolve. So you don't know what caudacity means. She's obviously talking about professional development there. And like when she says, I had to stop, the, or let's go to the next claim. The caudacity to say that black people can be racist too. Mr. Cisneros, can black people be racist too? I've already stated, Congressman, that I didn't agree with her statements. But uh, I'm asking Department about that provision. Can black people be racist? Uh, this, this question is about me or my personal beliefs, but again, well, I, you're I don't... You're the leading official I, over DEI. I don't agree. A racist person who works for you puts out these tweets, and you won't say whether you agree or disagree I told with you, I said, Mr. Chairman, I, I just don't want to remind members to observe standards of decorum. This is okay? decorum. It's my time. Can black people be racist? I do, I do not agree with that tweet. Do you agree with that statement? I'm asking you a statement. Can black people be racist? I'm not going to answer that, Congressman. Why not? Because it's, it's, you're asking me a personal opinion, and that's not what this well, is Well, actually, about. I'm asking you in your capacity as a senior DOD official in the Biden administration who is where we see recruiting falling off the table, whether or not the embrace of racist tweets, whether shuffling these people around rather than firing them, and whether this little exchange here is helping or hurting recruiting. Let's go ahead and put up the recruiting. I, I will tell you, we do not support racist tweets. We do not support racism. Well, did you military. fire this lady? Again, you hired I, her. As I stated, I did not hire her. As she DOD was, hired her. As, as it was stated earlier, she's a DoDia employee. She's a GS employee. The inquiry that was done said these these tweets were done on a personal matter. Oh, a personal matter. It, it, How do you know it's it a personal matter a personal, if you don't know that the PD could stand for within, professional development? And Mr. Cisneros, within. this is a professional development session where she attacked white colleagues and took the position that black people can't be racist. Now, you can't answer basic questions about it, and here's what I would propose to you. This is what we're looking at in recruiting right now. It's fallen off the table. And when you have employees that you don't fire who do racist things and say racist things, then you really hurt the ability to recruit people who want to be part of, a, of an inclusive and diverse force. I would say the data that we have is not, the recruiting is not falling off because of that. But again, the Department of Defense, Dodia, does not agree with the tweets that she made. It was she at 3 o'clock during the work day. You didn't fire her. If someone puts out racist things, do you fire them or do you just move them around? That was not an official, that was not an official, that's her own personal See, Twitter here's account. The, here's the problem with the double standard, Mr. Cisneros. When Caucasian members of the military post about the Second Amendment or supporting building the wall, you all seem to be on a white supremacy snipe hunt. You seem to take people's personal views and weaponize them against them. And I've had people in my district who serve that wonder whether or not some joke that they forwarded or meme that they liked is going to result in the ruining of their careers. But you have no such interest when it's a person like this. You delayed the investigation. Your own name was what, on, what DOD put out as conducted the investigation. You delayed it. This lady makes like $160,000 a year. Do you really think today the taxpayer should be paying this lady that amount of money? 
The uh, investigation was not conducted by me. That was never... Well, why did the Pentagon say it was you? I don't know who the uh, Pentagon in that said that, but I will tell you it was a misstatement. But Mr. Chairman, true. I seek the to enter... The investigation was well, conducted what, by Dodia because she's a Dodia employee. Well, it... it if you just fired racist people, then maybe you wouldn't have to go through this. But, Mr. Chairman, I have a series of unanimous consent requests. Without objection. So, so first is Pentagon drags out decision after probe into woke diversity chief accused of anti-white people's tweets. The second is wing selected as DODEA chief of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and that uh, is from DODEA.edu. The next is, everybody can be racist. DOD chief diversity educator defends tweets targeted toward white educators. Yeah, I, I've heard my colleagues say that we need to learn critical race theory so, so as to better unify. And, and I don't think that really reflects a, a reading of John O'Callamore and Bell Hooks and people who don't present critical race theory as a unifying ideology. Critical race theory is an explicit critique of the civil rights movement. It is a critique of Martin Luther King saying that we ought to, that we, uh, people write in the principal text of critical race theory that the civil rights movement got it wrong because the civil rights movement sought to have us come together as a nation and live in one country. So, so this is a separatist ideology. And I want to make clear, we're not trying to limit people's under, you know, reading or understanding of things. Do that on your own time. But when it comes to the United States military, we should not be teaching people that immutable traits like their race define their destiny. And while there will be further debate on critical race theory and whether or not we should have it at all, I want to get back to the substance of this amendment, which is merely a report on how much we're doing it and what it costs. And the reason that report is so essential is because we have observed in armed services where the top brass sometimes truly doesn't know that some of this pedagogy is ongoing. I, I had to hold up the What is White Privilege book that was being used at Dodoa. And it was, I thank Chairman Banks for consistently bringing in people so that we could confront them with the critical race theory and the odd divisive uh, ideologies that were being presented to our military. So I, I think you can support critical race theory, though I don't, and still vote for this amendment because it's merely reflecting how much of it is going on. And then if people want to defend that type of divisive conduct, we'll have debates and we'll have votes and hopefully we'll eradicate it. I, I thank the gentleman for yielding. I'll yield back. Great. Thank you very much. What's been interesting about this conversation is that critical race theory has been weaponized as a political tool. And we are mixing up DEI with CRT. Critical race theory simply looks at American racism and how it has shaped public policy over time. And running away from history does not help us have a stronger military. Being afraid of discussing systems does not help us have a stronger military, especially when we have the best and the brightest joining the military and we're insulting their intelligence by thinking that they can't talk about this, that they're being brainwashed. That is insulting to them and insulting to the military. As I look at this debate and how it's going to play out, Mr. Horsford was right. This is simply a ploy to get rid of DEI and to weaponize it. 40% of the people who serve in the military are people of color. 20% are African American. People who are in the military should feel as though they're getting a fair shot at promotion, at military justice, and that their basic needs are being met. But by trying to weaponize this topic, we are doing ourselves a big disservice. But here's the one suggestion I have for my friends across the aisle. Listen to the lived experience of people who are part of minority groups. Look at the stark difference between one side of this room and the other side of this room. When you are taking time to listen, you make better decisions. When you are taking time to learn from others, you're going to be more effective. If we want a stronger military, we cannot run from CRT, and we must embrace DEI as a central part of how we lead. I yield back, sir. Gentlelady yields back. Chair, and I recognize there's a gentlelady from Michigan, Ms. McLean. I'll make uh, one comment. I agree with you. We should listen and we, we should learn. That's why I don't know what we're, why we're afraid of, put, of, of doing a report, to listen and to learn. But again, let's not let the facts get in the way of a good story. And with that, I yield my time to Mr. Gates. Yeah, the gentlelady who spoke on, on the other side of the aisle said that critical race theory had been politically weaponized. And I could not agree more. It has been politically weaponized by the left 
against people when you explain as the central premise of critical race theory that people are captive to their immutable traits. And to suggest that it is insulting to the military to not subject this to this? No, what's insulting to the military is to sit people down and tell them that by virtue of their skin color, they are inherently oppressed or an oppressor and that that is inescapable. That is considerably more offensive than an amendment to talk about whether or not this is the right and just thing for the Department of Defense uh, to be engaged in. I, I would further observe that th the way critical race theory is presented is not like an understanding of history. That would still be fully allowed under any of the amendments that are being considered today. It's just that we don't tell people that they, they are locked in to this future because it's fundamentally un-American. Uh, and to my colleagues, questions about whether or not I intend to use this hearing to go after the diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives and the critical race theory in the military, the answer to that question is unequivocally yes. We will spend as many hours as it takes to de this military, and it's not an effort to dominate the time. Like, the criticism that because I've offered these amendments, we're dominating the time of the House Armed Services Committee is so stark when laid in contrast to the time that is dominated in training that we're simply trying to learn about to push ideas and ideologies that are radical and un-American. And so, yeah, we're gonna be going after DEI and we're gonna be going after critical race theory and I think that's what our military deserves. And it's not divisive for us to do that. What was divisive was to use prior National Defense Authorizations Act to establish these programs. Like in all these hearings where we drag the top brass of the military in and ask them questions, like the easiest response for any of them to us when we point out these bad things that they're doing is to say, look, you all demanded it in National Defense Authorization Acts. You told us we had to have a five-year plan. So I view this not as a wedge issue, not as divisive, but as remedial. We have to go and remediate the bad things that have happened as a consequence of this embrace of radical gender ideology and, and radical race ideology. A, a point my colleague Mr. Waltz always makes in these discussions. Republicans don't obsess about these things because we're so eager to chat about them. These things get brought to us by our constituents and by people who are wearing the uniform. I am struck by one particular case in my district where a majority minority unit had their leadership come to me and say the most dangerous thing they, they, they had to deal with at times uh, in terms of mental health and unit cohesion wasn't the adversary, it was the stand down ordered by Secretary Austin. Because then you had people who, the whole premise of their training was that they had a common experience. They had gone through something together. They were a unified collective force. And then when these people get told, oh well, you know, your, your teammate over here is so, so different and we have to obsess about those differences rather than our commonality, they get frustrated with that and they bring those materials to us. And one reason a report is so necessary is because even when we had General Milley here before us and Mr. Waltz asked him questions about some of this pedagogy and training that was going on, he said it doesn't exist. Total, totally a fiction. We were imagining these things. It was a critical race theory mirage that we had observed. And of course, Mr. Waltz brought the receipts and showed these generals over and over again the materials that our constituents bring to us to fight for them. And that is what we intend to do, and that is what this series of amendments will accomplish. I thank the gentlelady for yielding, and I yield back. And that's it for this video. Remember to subscribe and click that notification bell so you know when I make more videos like this. Peace.